Hi everybody and welcome back to the project. Uh, really apologize for the long waiting, but uh, I had to wait a lot for parts for this project and also for the other projects that I were uh, working on. So beyond the daily family and business uh, uh, problem that uh, usually stop me to come in the lab. So what you will see, uh, actually this uh, clip is uh, kind of the, at the finish of the video. Uh, what you will see is, is the final process and the enormous amount of faults that I have found on the receiver itself. So hope you enjoyed it and if you believe that is interesting, stick around. Well, it took me a while to source uh, all the hardware to prepare the extender wirings. And indeed I have uh, prepared all the uh, extender wire sets both 391s and 390s so it's a, a bunch of connectors and soldering work uh, I also have the micro uh, BNC done and the regular BNC I actually have sources some uh, uh, commercial wiring but this one is uh, the original, I found the original uh, connector, but uh, yeah, need to be worried. So I have prepared everything. The setup is ready. So let's see if we can find why we are losing the signal uh, on eight uh, kil kilo cycle bandwidth. I already have uh, prepared the spectrum analyzer. I already have removed the two uh, tanks, two transformers that I believe are part of the problem. The signal source and the tube uh, extender for testing the signals over there. So we should be ready to go. Let me switch on everything and let's try if we can fix the problem. Okay, so everything is connected. So the idea is to uh, feed signals from the stage before here and going ahead stage by stage, starting from the beginning. So the first IF amplifier, pin number one, control grid, of the tube and the setup is already done and I'm having signal. I am currently set the uh, bandwidth at 0.1 kilohertz and this is, uh, let's increase the local volume. We actually don't hear nothing. So it's minus 83 dBm, almost, minus 84, 83, 83, 83, 84. So the very first stage, we don't have any lose. We don't lose any signal here. So let's go to the second stage. I have moved my Spectrum analyzer to the second uh, IF amplifier over there, pin one, and I'm currently at 16 kilo cycle. Okay, I'm losing just a bit, but I'm losing now, I'm losing very low in. Uh, 8 kilo cycle, but 4 kilo cycle, the signal disappear completely. 
Why is it doing that? Might it be that I need the shield? Not at all. Okay, let me see what's happened. Okay, I am discovering something very strange. So if I remove this uh, shield, I'm losing the signal. I hope you can see. If I slide in, can you see that? So it seems that uh, those shields are part of the uh, IF alignment. So I wonder if uh, there is some wrong uh, contact or position that is uh, causing this uh, signal loss on 8 kilo cycle, which at the moment my connection is very poor here. I should prepare something more stable, but at the moment I'm losing no, 5 dB. Yeah, if I add, it's minus 80. Okay, I need to prepare more stable setup here. Otherwise, uh, I'm the risk is to lose the trees. Okay, so if I slide in, actually I'm not losing so much. 5 dB actually. And if I remove, I'm losing even more. So I wonder if... Uh, there is something wrong with the shield. So let's see if I can find something. Well, I think I have found something and I'm uh, currently monitoring the output of the IF. And if I switch uh, on all the ranges now, I have no change. I always be between 83 and 84 but what I had to do is to put to the maximum the gain on this stage if I reduce the gain here it seems that affect uh, the wall chain and in, in some way uh, perhaps uh, there is a feedback from from the AGC that is uh, doing something weird uh, yeah, it's affected the linearity in the amplification. So I think it might be, ha I, may, I might be, I might have a, a, a vacuum tube that uh, it's weak. So uh, I think uh, before to go ahead with any other troubleshooting, I need to check all those uh, uh, tubes if uh, they are good and but I wanna also try to swap, and maybe there is some internal leakage or, or increased capacitance that is uh, resonating to the eight kilocycle, kilocycle uh, bandwidth. So let me do those uh, tasks, and I'll be back as soon as I will find something interesting. Well, checking the components uh, doesn't give me any clue where I can find uh, something wrong or something damaged or something that is faulty. So I decided to perform a different way uh, of adjustment using my spectrum analyzer over there. And it seems that uh, that has been the uh, right decision. And indeed, if I rise up uh, my RF gain, I'm now having a nice uh, shape. And this is 16 kilocycle. 
this is 8 kilo cycle this is uh, 4 kilo cycle 2 1.1 I'm having a, a gradual uh, decreasing of the signal or increasing while I'm uh, uh, make the bandwidth wider so I believe that uh, the alignment uh, done with the spectrum analyzer gives a very very uh, much better result indeed in the manual uh, it's requested to peak the signals but these uh, bring out of frequency some uh, some uh, transformer here well the way that this works is that for each uh, bandwidth uh, uh, the transformer has a separate winding and I believe that there is some uh, drift in frequency when you switch from one coil to another it's almost impossible to uh, manufacture transformers that are perfect in all the frequency and despite there are uh, resistor here which I believe they have uh, put it for make more balance as possible uh, the frequency response and indeed here we also have this section of the bandwidth switch which uh, uses the uh, as uh, stated here in note 2 that those resistors are calibrated within a certain range in order to have a, an appropriate uh, frequency response or a flat frequency response in terms of uh, gain. So I think that uh, should be like that and I will not go farther in. There is no uh, wrong uh, components. There is no faulty components. I have checked everything here. So yeah, if you have anything different, you know something else, please let me know, leave me a comment. I really believe that now the, the receiver is working as it's supposed to be. And if I remove the signal and if I go to the receiving on the broadcast uh, band, I should have a strong signal here. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, Here we have a point one. So it's uh, passing through the signal very sharply and I can the same uh, hear it, so seems fine to me. So I will put back in the receiver, make again the wall alignment of RF because uh, I believe there is uh, something that needs to be uh, tweeted a bit. And then I believe the receiver should be ready to go. So let's do it like that. I'm in the back in the radio uh, performing the crystal oscillator adjustment since uh, it's quite uh, out I didn't uh, adjust this unit yet so it's almost not no reading and as I turn here yeah I increase no way to remove the glare yeah Yeah, pretty much out all those, uh, yeah, that's the peak. All those trimmers are pretty much out of alignment. Well, while I was uh, making the final tuning, uh, the receiver has developed another issue. And indeed, I don't have any more the voltage here on E208. 
that is relevant the third mixer sorry first mixer v203 64 is the valve the tube and i've checked in the uh, all the wirings and all is fine the tube is fine i've also tried to replace that i've checked relevant ground I have one Mac, I put my socket over there, the, the standard socket. So I start to believe that uh, we, uh, we might have some problem here in the switch. And unfortunately, because this has happened while I was uh, making a uh, band switch uh, change, uh, the band, the band uh, change here, the mega cycle change. So I'm afraid that the switch went uh, out of timing or perhaps uh, it's the clamp is loose. So I need to remove the RF deck again. That is uh, really annoying. I was almost ready. Well, uh, looking at the bandwidth switch, it seems that uh, it's not well centered and I did not touch this. Uh, by the way, if I turn the band switch, he turns. So it is mechanically connected, but it seems that it's not well synchronized. So I wonder if, uh, yeah, it stops uh, out of the center. So I may be able to, to adjust this. And especially here in the back, very difficult to see, but especially here, when it turns between these two ranges, seems that uh, doesn't doesn't touch any contact or barely. So need to to adjust this uh, in a more precise way by just uh, losing this clamp and. By the way, I need to check also the components around these tubes, uh, especially this one, which is the uh, V203, which I believe has some problem. Yeah, let's see. Well, I found the culprit why I lost my uh, signal. There are there was two resistors that were there was uh, weighed out of tolerance, this one and that one back th there, and they are both related to the mixer, to the first mixer. One is the grid, uh, the biasing resistor, and the other one is right that which is the one that uh, bring the B plus onto the valve. And both are way high in value. So I have replaced it. One also is, uh, it's looking a bit uh, discolored and toasted. So, and this one, uh, it's just uh, drifted up. So at this point, uh, if I plug, let me plug in the receiver, I'm monitoring on E9, E2209, sorry, yeah, 2E09, right here, with the probe, and I'm having back the signal. So, time to uh, make Again, the, or at least check the alignment mechanically and electronically that uh, it's uh, important. It's very easy to make some uh, turn and lost the synchronization as well as the crystal oscillator over there and the PTO down there. So, Let's do that and try again the receiver. Well, while I was in the process of reassembly and make 
the thousand and thousand tests uh, in the process, this uh, trimmer capacitor stops to regulate. It's a typical failure of this kind of ceramic uh, capacitor. I also have found those in the Titronix uh, oscilloscope and also in the receiver R388. So I'm going to remove and I had to I have to remove all the solder joints here, remove the cap, the capacitor and uh, repair the rubber uh, uh, shim that is between the two ceramic layer. So I'll show you later. So the way that I have used it to disassemble the capacitor is to apply flux on the terminal and let me grab a pointer. So I make free the resistor uh, terminal and as well as I have unwrapped the coil uh, wire and then I gently pry out uh, the clip which hold this small uh, shaft. There is a groove here. So this will allow me to slide out the capacitor. And that's the, the problem. This uh, rubber, uh, there is a groove that should face uh, in the silver uh, pleated area of the ceramic. So what I need to do is to remove, as you can see now is exposed. So this should face in front of that. This is the failure. Turn in the opposite way, so the capacitor will not regulate anymore. And we have another uh, contact here, which should uh, make the contact onto the silver plated ceramic area. The other part of the problem is the uh, very thin disc, ceramic disc, which is uh, completely stuck and bonded with the thicker one. And that shouldn't be like that. Uh, indeed, the regulation is between these two discs. So the thinner one should remain stopped and the rubber, the rubber, uh, gasket, or I don't know how to call it, should face in front of the contact. But since these uh, two discs are sticked together, the capacitor will not regulate anymore. So the task is now to separate and make them free. And it's very easy to break them up. I will use some dioxide to lubricate the process and see if we can save the capacitor. Okay, so I will spray and then gently I make some pressure and yeah, it's already freed up. Look at that. It can turn now and I can slide it out. And this is the capacitor. So let's clean up, reassembly and should work. So I have applied the two tiny drops of glue over there, as well as onto the rubber. So we'll try to center. Just like that. So now I will align this uh, metal uh, deposit right over the contact the best as I could and then I will put this right onto it at this point we need to mount back the clip
which I need to turn 90 degrees the wall uh, unit so I'll be back okay the clip is back in place so by checking here uh, there is a smooth action and the thinner disc is uh, steady in its place so it seems okay so I will uh, uh, re flow the solder joint here and reassemble the wall unit in the radio and see if it works. And that's the final result. While I was in the process of uh, re receiver alignment, I found that uh, the PTO has drifted than uh, it was in the beginning. So it now has a range which is uh, over two uh, two hertz uh, on the frequency dial so what uh, what i want to do is to regulate but as usually is the coil adjustment the range coil adjustment is over there this screw and it was uh, i find completely loosen up and, and lock it in the extended position that because the iron core in the PTO has drifted and the characteristics uh, are changed so I will need to modify the shape of the coil internally so as you can see it's already broken the seal so somebody has been in before me. This is the coil in question. So I need to scratch the wire here and attach one jumper wire in order to bypass the latest, let's say, eighth of a turn or sixth of a turn, I will see. Depending on how much it has drifted, uh, the, the iron core, the powder iron, iron core, uh, uh, slug. Uh, this is the beautiful uh, adjustment that uh, the purpose of those uh, small plates is to uh, provide uh, a linearity adjustment while it is sliding in and out. And it's adjusts uh, uh, very precisely the amount uh, uh, actually change it's like a, a, a pitch change in the screw so it moves uh, uh, left and right in order to have a very minor uh, adjustment uh, very precisely and also the pitch of this coil is very important as uh, you can see maybe there is a variable pitch this is a very uh, electromechanic uh, uh, device which is uh, very important the way that is built up so let's see if we can uh, bring back to a usable range well it's not really visible but uh, I have placed it very tiny wire between the uh, let's see over there uh, let's say five millimeter beyond the uh, coil end right here uh, let's see if uh, uh, now it's uh, behaving as it should the pto frequency should be uh, from 2.455 megahertz to 3.455 in exactly 10 turns of the shaft uh, so let's see if uh, we have achieved the range as requires. Uh, it will require many trial and finally, hopefully, we will have uh, the exact range. And this is the test setup. Must be covered by this shield here. Otherwise, all the tests will be failing. I have attached the frequency counter over there 
I already set to 4.55, which is the lowest frequency. And I have marked here. I already make another test, change a bit, already marked, then make the 10 turns and see how it reads. I'm now reading 3.45. But the key on this plate, it uh, went beyond my sign. So I need to adjust this, this screw, the coil, and see if I can uh, bring it back I mean, in re exact range. Again, 2.455. This is my mark. Let's make 10 turns. 55 yeah let's call it good and we are very close now very minor adjustment required well in order to have a more precise reference I place this uh, wire as a pointer and I'm now reading 3.455 so let's make 10 turn and we are now reading 2.455 and the pointer is straight on almost it's good for me so i will reassemble everything including the uh, heater and check uh, again with the eating with the oven uh, switch it on and see if there is any drift in the regulation and then we can reassemble and test the receiver again. Everything is reassembled. It took quite a bit to become warm, but it's uh, almost stable now. And I have tested the 10 turns, still perfect. So all the covers are installed. I just need to mount back the uh, locking plates and we are ready to go well let's check uh, how it's tracking now i am on 1.1 megahertz which is the frequency required for the second if uh, variable if alignment and i'm at 2.9 megahertz spot on and i am Picking the meter, yeah, it's almost there, right here, yeah, spot on. So let's move to 2.1 and go to 1.9 and let's see how it tracks. For sure in the middle will be some drifting because when the slug is so much uh, aged uh, we have such problem but at least uh, the bottom and top of the scale yeah we are picking up yeah 900 almost there yeah maybe one small mark out which is uh, over the acceptable level for this uh, age of equipment so uh, i'm pretty happy about that i now can go ahead with the full alignment again and i'll be back two small things that i have not mentioned yet in the audio section there is a, a cathode bypass capacitor which lives right onto the cathode resistor like that that is in this schematic is not mentioned and i believe it's a later revision audio unit it was completely leaky it's almost a resistor right now so i have replaced that and the capacitor that I have uh, repaired is now tuning as uh, expected and if I rotate this is the uh, diode load voltage that should be checked and it's regulating I can pick uh, at 4.8 and something 
So, yeah, I can proceed with the complete alignment. Okay, I eventually been able to finish the receiver alignment and it came up pretty good, pretty good. And it's currently receiving a very distant station. Uh, the signal is very weak. I have preset the auto tune, so let's uh, switch to channel two. Keep care of here; it's noisy. This is a local station which is very very strong so it's uh, it's working as it should uh, the auto tuning system is working perfectly so I will uh, reassemble everything handles and see the final result okay everything is completely reassembled and it's fully functional. One thing that I want to see if the response of the bandwidth, as we can hear, it's dropping down and it's working as expected. So we don't have any drop in the 8 kilocycle bandwidth so it's uh, came up uh, pretty well so i think it's uh, enough for this uh, equipment and i can go ahead after so long time in this project so shortly will come uh, other videos about other projects however the next uh, video that will uh, refer to the station will be the remote control which is a very neat uh, component so yeah we will see how it will come so thank you very much uh, for watching and apologize for the long wait and i believe that uh, the next future will be uh, see me posting videos in a more regular basis. So again, thank you very much for watching and see you soon.